Okay, good evening, everyone, and uh, welcome to the uh, our virtual, uh, basically, freshman roundup this evening. Uh, it's the first one we've ever done, and uh, hopefully it's the last. We would much rather uh, be seeing you in person in our auditorium and, and greeting all of our uh, students that will be uh, here at Modern Day next fall and all those parents. And I can assure you, um, you know, I've, I've been here since 1992, and Ms. Shea Rainier is going to speak in a little bit. She's been here since 1990. There are a lot of you that we may have had in class back in the 90s and the early 2000s, and, and we always enjoy seeing all of you come back as well. Uh, but what I want, would like to do first is just set some groundwork uh, a little bit on how we want to do this as we move forward. First of all, if everybody could put uh, your screen on mute, it kind of helps on our end, the background noise, and it, it just so we're not hearing and you're not hearing different things. Uh, so if everybody could mute their screens, that would help. That would help. Also, at any time, uh, ask questions. And the, the way we're going to take questions, uh, there is a chat room or there's an area where you can send a question to us. Uh, Ms. Melba Wilderman is monitoring our chat room. Now, for example, uh, if I'm discussing dress code for next year and you have a question about dress code, uh, you know, send it through the chat and we will answer it when we're on that slide. If it's something that you think needs to be answered at the end, that's fine. We can wait and we'll answer all questions at the end. And if it's a personal question that relates just to your child, uh, you can email us and we would welcome that and we would get back to you probably sometime tomorrow and try to answer those questions. So with that being said, I'd like to begin this evening with a prayer. Uh, we say prayer every morning uh, here at Modern Day uh, to begin our day. A lot of the teachers say prayer at the beginning of each class and then we have an afternoon prayer as well along with announcements. So let's get going with a prayer. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. For the freshman class, Loving Father, you are the source of all new beginnings. We give thanks for our incoming freshman class, and we ask you to be present to all those beginning high school this fall. Help them not to be afraid, but to embrace their high school years with courage, hope, and determination to do their best. Give to them a deep conviction of your love for them and help them to take advantage of the opportunities that will come their way. We pray in the name of Jesus the Lord, amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Throughout the uh, evening here, there's going to be several of us that are speaking on different topics. And I would like to introduce uh, the speakers. First of all, our president, uh, Mr. Andy Morris. Uh, this is uh, Mr. Morris's second uh, year here at Modern Day. And he uh, brings a, a knowledge, uh, you know, from a different, not so much from, say, education, but from a media standpoint and a business standpoint. And so he is our president in charge of our OIA office, and he will speak a little bit about tuition at a later time. My name is Darren Knight. I'm the principal. This is my seventh year. I will begin my eighth year as principal next year. The uh, I've been here, like I said, since 1992. I'm an 85 graduate. Uh, of modern day and it really it's a privilege to be here and an honor and the reason that it works is because of all of the parents that we have and the students that we get that make this such a special place. Uh, Ms. Melba Wilderman is with us tonight as I said she's going to monitor the uh, chat room and, and answer or send questions to us she is assistant principal she was a classmate of mine here at modern day she was also an 85 graduate uh, she was a longtime principal of St. Joe in the county. So those St. Joe people uh, on the Zoom with us, uh, you probably remember Miss Melba Wilderman out there. Uh, this is her third year uh, as assistant principal of Modern Day High School, and she brings a wealth of knowledge and skills uh, to our administrative staff. Miss um, Shea Rainier is director of guidance here at Modern Day. She came in the fall of 1990. So she's been here a while. Uh, she moved into the main office as a counselor in 2005. Um, she works with a lot of different, or works in a lot of different areas of scheduling, uh, but she works um, closely with seniors. Uh, you know, you come to Modern Day, uh, things go well. We want them to go well. We're gonna work with you. 
uh, but she works with our graduates, our, our you know seniors a lot of times uh, in scholarships and, and moving kids on to that next level of, of education. Ms. Jill Seiler, our enrollment manager, uh, she is she is also in her third year. She is from St. James Parish, and uh, she has done a wonderful job here at Modern Day communicating with all of our families and our feeder schools, and we're very happy to have her with us. And then you can see on the screen uh, our emails uh, if you need to contact any one of us, or the Modern Day main office phone number is right there as well. At this time, uh, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Ms. Rainier, who is going to begin um, with a new, uh, basically a DOE guidance, you might say, uh, the pathway to a diploma that all schools in the state of Indiana are going to have to follow. And so I'm gonna turn it over to Ms. Shea Rainier at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Knight. And um, I wish I could see all your faces. I know uh, a lot of you um, I probably taught in class. So it's wonderful to see you again. And it's wonderful that um, you put your trust in us to educate your children. We don't take that um, lightly at all. And uh, we, we believe it's an honor to educate this next generation. So thank you so much for giving us that opportunity. Uh, what we want to do is we want to look at the green sheet that's in your folder. Um, it was sent home today. It says Modern Day High School Class Registration Sheet. Um, and I'm kind of going to go through the different um, ways that you can fill that out. But the first thing we need to talk about is you're here to get a diploma. And the state of Indiana has a new pathway to diplomas. And, it, and really what they've done is they said each student needs to fill three buckets in order to graduate. The first one is the academic bucket. And if you've had students, um, older students, we have the academic honors diploma and the core 40, that hasn't changed. And the requirements for academic honors and core 40 haven't changed. So that's the same. And we'll kind of go more into detail on that with the registration sheets. The other two buckets, the employability skills and the post-secondary readiness are, have always been a part of modern day. We're just uh, recategorizing them in a different way. The employability skills bucket is in essence service. And if you've been around modern day, you know service is a very important part of our school. Now, what will happen is in um, all of the religion classes or theology classes, there is a service assignment, a service component. Uh, Mr. Knight will speak with that a little more uh, later in this presentation where we log those hours and they're in different areas in the community and the school. So that will fill the employability bucket and all of that will come through theology. So you don't have to worry about doing anything extra outside of school for that. The third bucket is the readiness or you're going to call them your SAT and ACT tests. Um, every junior at Modern Day um, has the option to take the SAT and ACT during school. We're the only school right now in Evansville that, and the first school that had that where we can take it during the school day. So our kids don't have to miss a, um, something on a Saturday to go out to a different school, USI or Central to take that. So all three of the buckets we have incorporated into the school year, into the school day. So rest assured that your son or daughter will fill all those buckets with no issues. Okay, moving on to the next slide. <laughs> and I have technical difficulties. Okay, all right, so the first thing we're going to talk about on the green sheet is registering for classes. Now, the, um, the green sheet up in the corner should have your class recommendations, but what we're done, going to talk about first is Theology English 9, preparing for college and career and personal financial responsibility. All of these are required for graduation. So every student has to have these. Those are already circled on your green sheet. All right, and these are required during the freshman year. Um, theology and English, everyone's mixed together. There are no levels to it, nor is there in preparing for college and career or personal financial responsibility. So this is kind of a chance that in these four classes, your student will have a chance to mix with different kids in his own, in the freshman class, and hopefully meet a, a variety of people and some new friends. Okay, um, as we start with the core classes of science, there are three options on the freshman level. Earth, space, biology, and honors biology. And if you look at that sticker on the top of the green sheet, there has been a recommendation. 
Now, again, these are recommendations. And the way this was arrived was we looked at the PSAT scores, your math and English grades, and your teacher recommendations. And now again, these are a recommendation if, and you are the expert on your child. If you believe that your child should be in a different class, please give us a call or talk to us, send us an email and we can discuss that. But based on the data that we had, we made those recommendations. Now, what you're gonna find with EarthSpace is, is a little bit slowed down version. It kind of gets a student ready if they're not ready to jump into the rigors of the biology. Um, it goes a little slower with the labs and just kind of builds up that foundation to prepare the student to be successful in biology. A majority of the students will be in regular biology. It is the basic science requirement for graduation. Um, if you start with biology as a freshman, sophomore year, you will go into integrated chemistry and physics. And then after sophomore year, junior and senior year, you're open to more of the upper level science classes. Now, if science is your thing and you have good grades in math and English, you may have been recommended for honors biology. Honors biology is, um, they use the same book as biology, but it will move faster. It goes more in depth. There are a lot more labs. And I think a lot of it is it's more individualized. The student has more accountability in this class. Um, it's definitely a class that the student's going to have homework in, the student's going to have to work at, but it also reaps a lot of rewards. It really prepares them to move on to those upper level science classes earlier. So as a sophomore, if you're coming out of honors biology, you'll be able to take chemistry or physics. Math. Now the math options um, are interesting. Um, and, and this is a little bit tougher. I know we have the recommendations up in the corner. Um, and a lot of this comes from the math class that you are currently in. We have three levels of algebra at modern day. Algebra one with the math lab is a chance for, and these are for the students that struggle a little bit with math. You have math every day. So you have the math class and you have the math lab. The, math, the algebra class, You'll go over just like any other regular algebra class would. You'll go over the assignments, you'll have the teaching. But then the lab is a support with the same teacher that helps you with your homework, helps you with increased understanding so that you kind of are looking at the same assignment for two days in a row. At the end of algebra, the freshman year, then you will have two credits. You'll have your algebra credit and you'll have your math lab elective credit. A majority of our students are gonna go into algebra and that is if you are currently in eighth grade math or pre-algebra, you're gonna go into the regular algebra. Um, and this is going to be um, the first option on your green sheet. If you are, if you take the second option on the algebra, some of you need, are gonna be taking um, the, what we wanna kind of call the advanced algebra. You've already had algebra, you've been exposed to it, but you wanna strengthen that foundation. So you will take algebra um, again, and then the grades from this year will be the ones that will be on your transcript. Some of you who did really well in eighth grade algebra will also be able to double up, which means you can take algebra and geometry. Now, what that does is if you double algebra and geometry as a freshman, it allows you to get to calculus or statistics by the time you're a senior. A select few of you will be able to pass, bypass algebra and take geometry only. You can sign up provisionally with your eighth grade teacher's recommendation to take only geometry. In order to do that, um, we will um, send the algebra one exam to your schools in April your student will have to take that algebra exam and pass it with the benchmark grade in order to go into geometry. If your student wants to take geometry and does not hit the benchmark on this test, they will be put in the algebra class. Also, if you want to take geometry, you must have an A for both semesters in your eighth grade algebra class. If your goal is to get to calculus or statistics, and you're not ready to double up as a freshman, you can double up as a sophomore with geometry and algebra too. But again, you have to have at least a B plus in your freshman algebra at modern day, and you'll be given the option to double up. Um, I know this is a little confusing. If you have any questions, please put it in the chat and we will send you the email of Miss Jeannie Thomas from math. The social studies option. Um, either freshman or sophomore year, every student in the state is required to take geography or world history. So if you don't take it as a freshman, then you'll take it as a sophomore. 
this is both of these are two semester classes you must take one um, geography obviously deals more with maps and locations there's a lot of culture in this class world history is more the story of a culture or a civilization both um, do meet that social studies requirement so either one is fine pe now and again and for the state every student must have at least two semesters of pe you can take our pe class or as most of our students do they get their pe through flex credit that means that the student is involved in a physical activity um, as in a, in a team outside of the the school day so to get the flex credit a student must complete two seasons of any two sports um, cheerleading band marching band color guard or winter guard now this is different if you've had older students in the past you could play one sport for two seasons and get this credit now you have to play two different sports so let's say you are a one sport athlete you can play that sport and get one flex credit and then you'll have to get a second semester of the pe credit here if you play two sports two credits you're fine Um, also, if you're doing academic honors, world language is an option. We offer Spanish and German. If you're interested in the academic honors diploma, you must take three years of one language or two years of two. So, for example, you can take Spanish one, two, and three, or you can take Spanish one and two and German one and two. Either one keeps you on the track for academic honors. Or if you don't, if you still have your core 40 and you like the languages, you can take at least one to two years of a foreign language. Electives that you can use. Now study hall and a lot of kids, it's fine. You can take a study hall every semester as long as you don't fail any classes and you will be fine to graduate with the number of credits you need for academic honors or core 40. Um, a student can only take at the most one study hall per semester. You can't take more, but that does not get you any credits. But that is a good time, especially if you have activities after school that gives you an hour and a half every other day to get some homework accomplished. So that's that's not a bad idea, especially for some of our very busy students. Some other options for one semester classes, intro to business, uh, digital applications and responsibilities or English journalism. And these students that are in the journalism class do end up rolling over and end up working in student media where they work with our newspaper and our yearbook. Other electives are in our fine arts department. If you are pursuing the academic honors diploma, which is the highest diploma that the state of Indiana allows, um, you must have two semesters of fine arts before you graduate available to freshmen for one semester at a time intro to 2d art advanced 2d art intro to 3d art advanced 3d art and fiber arts all of those fulfill the fine arts requirements for two semesters which would be year-long classes you have concert band and concert choir once you've had a chance to look over the green sheet make your choices and speak with your teachers at your schools i will zoom with students from each school at the appointed times and you can see them here on the screen holy redeemer february 10th the zoom will be at 7 30 for your students saint joe february 10th at 9 30 saint wendell february 11th at 7 30 saint philip february 11th at 9 20 resurrection february 12th at 7 30 corpus christi february 12th at 12 30 St. James, February 16th at 8.15, and Westside Catholic, February 17th at 7.45. So I'll be on those Zooms. I will speak with each of the uh, eighth graders individually. And if you have questions, please let us know, and I will call you during those uh, the time I'm speaking with your student. At this time, Mr. Knight will go over some of the papers in the folder and the physical forms. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Rainier. The uh, physical form, all of our students that enter as uh, enter ninth grade uh, have to have a 
physical form filled out by your physician. It is in the folder. The um, now a couple things on that, as you can see there, it is due August 9th, but you can't get a physical until after April 1st. Uh, so if you're going to schedule an appointment for the immunizations and the physical, please make sure it's after April 1st and but before August 9th in order to turn that in. For those of you that are planning on playing a sport or be involved in an activity next fall, the uh, there's a separate uh, form that you have to have filled out by the ISSAA. You can go to our website uh, and get that form. You can go to the ISSAA website uh, and get the form. You can stop by Mr. Herman's office, the athletic office, and get that form. Again, it's the same. It's the sports form. Um, so if you have a physical planned uh, for this summer, make sure you get that sports form as well. Take it with you and have your doctor fill it out and get them both filled out at the same time. That uh, sports uh, physical is is required before the first or the start of the first practice, which the fall season begins on August 2nd. And so that has to be filled out, signed by a doctor and turned into the athletic department before August 2nd, or else your child will not be able to participate in practice that day. Service program. Um, this is a little bit of a work in progress. Uh, we believe that you know our students, when they come to modern day, uh, should participate uh, and learn service. And you can see there that we are looking at possible 12 service hours each semester. We would like four hours to the student's parish or church, four hours to our modern day com community, and four hours to the general community. Um, we are working with our religion department uh, on this service hours. Now, it was suspended this past spring uh, because of COVID and because we were out of school, but the religion department is working on bringing the service program back. And there is an app that you can put on your phone, the kids can put on, and they can keep track of the hours uh, on their phone, but it also then goes to, it comes to Chad Breeden, uh, who will set up the number of hours and, and track uh, these service hours. Now, four hours to modern day, that can, is something that can be, you know, done after school, uh, helping around here uh, with, with projects. It can be a Saturday morning project. Uh, it doesn't have to be uh, anything that is building anything. You know, it, it could be you know, on campus cleanup day. Uh, those kinds of activities uh, will count as service hours. Now the religion department, as you can see, there's 12 hours that we're asking, probably half of the hours will be assignments from the religion department. They are going to assign different projects, different, uh, basically, you know, where you will get credit for your religion grade uh, to complete this service program. And so we will continue to work with the service program and the religion department and Mr. Chad Breeden should be sending more information out about our service program. Okay, frequently asked questions. What is modern day's attendance policy? First of all, you know, we want you here and you must attend school to participate in extracurricular activities. Now, so basically, you must be here at school by 8.15 in the morning in order to participate in an extracurricular activity that day. <laughs> However, if you have a doctor's appointment at 7.30 in the morning and you don't get to modern day until 8.45, that's an excused absence. Okay, that's no problem. You can participate. Um, there are other excused absences that we do allow them and they are in the handbook. Whereas if you are late to school for that reason and you have a doctor's appointment or you have an excuse or whatever that may be, you can participate. But if you just come in and say, well, I slept in because I was tired and you don't have a good reason, you will not be able to participate in that extracurricular activity. The other thing on attendance, uh, we ask that if your child is not coming into modern day, you know, that morning that you call in and let us know by eight o'clock. After eight o'clock, our attendance secretary will call home and find out 
you know, what's going on, where your child is. Uh, we just want to make sure that everything is okay. Now let's talk a little bit about uh, attendance and, and grades. Um, we have with our attendance, we have excused absences and we have unexcused absences. And I'm not a big believer in the term unexcused. So for example, um, if you have to attend a funeral for a day, obviously that is an excused absence. But if you call in and you say, hey, my, my child uh, is not feeling well, they're sick, we have to count that as unexcused. That, that is done by the state where we have to take, or we have to keep track of our attendance policy or the number of kids, number of days that they are in session. It doesn't mean when we say unexcused that we don't believe that your child is sick or, you know, but we have to mark it that way. I think a better way of looking at those unexcused absences would be personal days or PTO time, if you want to call them that. Um, what we allow uh, per quarter are three unexcused absences per block. So if there, and that's, you know, in a nine week period and, and three absences uh, can be a week's worth of school. The, uh, you know, the idea there is uh, we feel that it's important that you be in session and that you, you know, be in the classrooms uh, to get the best possible education that you can get. If you miss a fourth unexcused in a block, uh, you are putting yourself at risk of not getting the credit for that class. Uh, and it is up to the administration to decide whether you will get a passing grade or we obviously can say that you will not get your credit and you will get an F for the quarter. We really don't wanna go there. Uh, we want you to, to be in school, uh, to be in the classrooms and participating on a daily basis. Cell phones. Um, we allow our students to have their cell phones in their lockers. Uh, we allow our students to have their cell phones in the hallways. Uh, they take them to their classes. We have asked our teachers we have pouches in the rooms. We've asked our teachers to have the students put their phones uh, in the pouches in the room. Uh, that way, you know, if there's five, 10 minutes at the end of a, of a block, some teachers allow their students to go ahead and get on their phone, um, you know, to interact that way. Others do not. Uh, but what we don't want to see, we don't want to have them in the students' hands while class is going on. And so, a lot of times kids will check messages and their cell phones uh, during our five minute passing period. Um, I don't really like to see them in the lunch line. If they have them at lunch, uh, we have like a different herding lunch schedule that we run this year because of, of the COVID situation and the contact tracing. Uh, we are a little bit more lenient right now during those times uh, with the phones. But I think the main thing with these cell phones would be when the teacher is or when the students are in class and the teachers are working and lessons are being taught we cannot have the disruptions of of a student on a cell phone so that's kind of our policy now as far as consequences if a student is on their phone uh, and a teacher takes their phone away they'll bring it to my office uh, what I do is if if a child uh, or a student uh, you know, is misusing their phone, what I will do is I will ask them to bring me their phone before school. Uh, so they drop it off at basically 720 and then they pick it back up at 210 at the end of the day. I do not want to keep a phone overnight. Um, I will not do that, but I will keep those phones in, in my office. Uh, and usually I'll go about three to five days. Uh, for first offense, uh, as far as them dropping off their phone in my office. Uh, but by no means would I ever keep a phone overnight. I know that kids, uh, I know there's a lot, a lot of homes, don't, you don't have home phones anymore. I know they're out and about, they're at practice, they're at work, uh, they're going home late. And I know it's a great insurance policy, insurance policy or a safety issue. And so I definitely want these kids to have their phones because I know as a parent, you want to be able to get a hold of your child. But if they can't stay off their phone in class, then they can bring them to school, but they will stay in my office for the day. Uh, we also have the one-on-one -on -one initiative here at Modern Day, which 
you can bring your own uh, device, your own your laptop to school. A majority of our kids uh, have the Chromebooks, and the Chromebook seems to work uh, with everything that we are doing here at Modern Day. There is a we ask that there be a minimum of a 10 inch screen, that it has a keyboard, that uh, you know the, we ask that the students you know be diligent and charge their uh, Chromebook or their laptop uh, overnight so that they have a full battery when they when they do show up. Uh, but we are, and we have uh, Shane Getty. Uh, he's our media uh, specialist. Uh, you know, he works with uh, these devices. He works with teachers and making sure they're utilized in the classrooms. Uh, you know, we don't want you to purchase uh, a Chromebook and they not be used. And so as we continue to move forward, uh, you know, year after year and with this one-on-one -on -one initiative, uh, our teachers are really getting better about using the Chromebooks uh, on a daily basis. And so we will continue uh, with that policy of, of each kid having their own device. Now we recommend, you know, that you obviously have some type of carrying case, uh, you know, a padded case so that they do not get damaged. We also, you know, make sure that your students and everybody will be issued a locker and they will have a lock that they lock everything up. Uh, you know, between classes, you know, every time that they're not at their locker, uh, basically just to make sure that these devices are well taken care of. If for some reason it breaks down, uh, we do have um, X number of Chromebooks that we have in the media center and the students can go to the media center in the morning and check one out uh, for the day. It may be a couple days until, you know, you get your computer back. And so we try to work with all the kids um, and making sure that everybody has their own device when they come to modern day. There is transportation available. Uh, we have probably about 20 kids who, who do ride the bus on a daily ba basis. Uh, we're on a schedule right now where obviously uh, we do have kids that ride the bus in the morning. But then we also have a bus that picks up our students at 2:10 in the afternoon. Uh, they do not they do not miss any class time because uh, right now we are dismissing at 2:05 every day, which is before the bus leaves or right about the time the bus leaves. Uh, students are not going to homeroom this year because of COVID. Uh, that's just another contact uh, tracing area that we don't want to uh, have to deal with, and another cleaning spot. Uh, that we don't need to deal with. And so what we've done is eliminated homeroom. And if we do have homeroom next year on certain days, um, those kids that ride the bus, yeah, they may leave early, but they would miss homeroom. The most important thing is that they would not miss any class time. Uh, we can get them the information, you know, if they miss something in homeroom or if they need to vote for a homecoming ballot. Uh, any types of fundraiser activities, we can get them that information. It's hard to replace uh, that class time. And so we feel very important about having homeroom at the end of the day uh, so that these students that ride the bus are in class for as long as possible. As far as drop-off procedures, it can get, uh, you know, in the mornings and at pickup time, I'm, I'm sure at your grade schools, it's the same way, but, you know, it can get a little bit congested here in our parking lot because we have 500 kids that are leaving um, at the same time at 205 or we have kids that are getting here in the morning. Basically, let's talk about drop off locations and the doors that are open. First of all, uh, our doors open at 630 in the morning. You can drop your child off uh, that early. I know a lot of the grade schools are seven o'clock, uh, but we feel that, you know, coming to high school, uh, that the uh, students, you know, can come in our building. They, they come into our cafeteria. Uh, they sit in the cafeteria. They can work on homework. They have their own device. They have their phones. Uh, we feel that this is a privilege, you know, where uh, they can come in and handle themselves accordingly. And so, you know, if you uh, have to go to work early uh, or for whatever reason, you have to drop your child off at 6.30 a.m., our door is open. Uh, because of safety issues, uh, we only have two doors open in the morning. Um, one would be door number three, which is the cafeteria entrance, which is probably uh, the most popular drop-off spot. 
that is right on the south side of the building. Uh, Miss Melba Wilderman is there every day uh, to greet uh, your child uh, as they come in. But we have other students, whether they drive or parents who drop off in the back parking lot or the north parking lot, uh, they walk around to door number one, which is the door on the teardrop. Uh, and uh, Miss Bubby Wanamilla there is there to greet those students. Those are our only two drop off are our only two doors that are open. So, you know, if your child is an athlete and they have to carry, uh, you know, equipment, uh, whatever, down to the locker room, you know, the best bet would be to drop off at door number three or the cafeteria door because it's the closest to the locker room. Uh, but these are safety features that we have. Now, the drop off locations, as you can see, uh, the back parking lot, which is the north parking lot, I don't think that that is utilized enough. Uh, there is probably less congestion in the back parking lot than anywhere else. And so you can drop off down there. The kids can walk around to the front of the building and enter our building. Um, some people do choose to use the front teardrop, which is perfectly fine. And then you also have the main parking lot or the cafeteria door as well. It's, it's whatever time um, you get here. You know, if, if you're here before seven o'clock, the main parking lot drop off is going to be fine. If you're dropping off right at 715, 710, that's probably the busiest time. Uh, you know, if you're looking to get in and get out real quick, you know, my advice would be the back parking lot. But I think each and every one of you will figure out, you know, what works for you and your family and your schedule uh, as you move forward next year. Dress code, um, you know, we, we do have, you know, a certain dress code here. We do uh, have, you know, the modern day logo approved short. It's a three button polo. We also do allow uh, the Oxford, you know, a button down collared shirt with the modern day approved uh, logo. Uh, all of our students wear khaki pants, black or brown dress shoes. Um, you know, most of our kids, most of our students do wear the Sperry um shoes or like an equivalent of it doesn't have to be a sperry brand but an equivalent like i think dockers has them uh but every year it seems that there is different styles uh different brands names whatever that you know that become popular i all i can say is you know we we don't want athletic shoes or tennis shoes or boots or sandals uh, you know, the idea for me on a dress code is to be neat, have your shirt tucked in, uh, have a belt on, uh, you know, and have some type of equivalent shoes. Now, I say this every year and people take me up on it every year. Uh, what I, if you have any question, like, are these shoes, uh, do they pass modern day dress code? Are they going to be allowed? I have people every year. They're at the store, they're at shoe carnival, they're at the mall, they're what, wherever, Coles, it doesn't matter. They'll take a picture of the shoe and they'll send it to me. Um, I'm sure, you know, if you need my uh, cell phone number, email me, I'll give it to you. Uh, and you take a picture of your shoe and you say, are these a lot? Every year I get pictures uh, in July and right before school. Uh, are, these, are these legal? And I'd rather tell you up front you know, what I'm thinking, I don't want you to spend $80, $90 on a pair of shoes. And then the second day of school, I have to say, hey, I don't think those are up to dress code. And by then it's too late to take them back. And so, like I said, the idea is not to be athletic shoes, uh, but to be a legal type of shoe that we do allow. Now, we used to have, uh, we do want them to wear socks at all times. Now we used to say black or brown. I, I don't get worked up over socks. Um, I know that's a younger generation, um, you know, deal with different colored socks, different patterns. Uh, kids have to be unique. Uh, so we do allow, you know, socks a little bit different types, you know, kind of look the other way, as long as they're not extravagant or anything uh, negative uh, to any of our offensive to any of our other people in the building. And so please use your best discretion uh, with socks. But that pretty much is our dress code that we have. We do have the vendors uh, that we use. Uh, if you need to know those, 
They're, okay, uh, Miss Tyler just told me they're they are on the sheet. You know the vendors that we use, and uh, so please uh, ask them. Uh, we work closely with our vendors. Uh, they pretty much know what is allowed and what's not allowed. So just ask them. And a lot of times, I mean, I know who our vendors are. I, I've had um, I'll use say Mary Widener from Southwest Graphics. She'll just call me uh and say hey i you know is this allowed is this legal i'm saying it is we change this uh and, and we work with them uh every year because i do know styles and things change on a year-to-year -year basis so uh just contact us just work with us and we'd be glad uh to work with you on any of those issues at this time um i would like to turn this uh, presentation over to our president mr andy morris who is going to talk a little bit about tuition information Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Knight. It is a pleasure to be here with you this evening to uh, you know, talk to you a little bit more about modern day. And also, uh, I appreciate the time that you're taking uh, to look at an investment in your child for a secondary Catholic education. So we truly appreciate that here. I want to talk a little bit about the tuition for next year along with tuition payment. Two things I want to say about tuition first. Uh, what you're seeing here uh, on the screen or in your sheet were um, the tuition rates page. You are looking at the estimated rates for next year. Now this will be finalized next week so by mid-February you will see this um, but I do feel confident what you're looking at here will be um, what you should be anticipating for next year. Now, on the second thing I want to say about tuition is, and I was doing my research um, before this meeting, our increase this year is very minimal. And at Modern Day, what we try to do is to keep the tuition increase at a minimum. Last year, we had a very modest increase. This year, it is actually the lowest increase we've seen in the last 36 years, and we're very proud of that. Now, um, if you are a parishioner at one of our partner schools, for one student, you're looking at $7,460. If you're a Catholic family from a non-assessed parish, you're looking at $8,460, and then a non-parishioner, about $10,850. Um, on your sheet, you have uh, the listing on there for a second student, and if you have multiple students here beyond that, we do have that information available. Our book rental is 275 per student. As of last year, we incorporated all of our fees, except for the book fee, into the tuition rate. So what you see for tuition plus book is what you should expect to pay here at Modern Day. And there will be um, no additional fees in terms of your child's tuition. Now we have three uh, um, options here for payment plans. Uh, we use a service called Fax. It's a, uh, an application that our business manager, uh, Mrs. Karen Liley, um, you know, once you get ready to, um, when you get signed up, she will send you a link where you're able to uh, log into that and to take care of your tuition payments. Um, we have a full payment option uh, and all of our tuition payments are due on July 16th. So if you're paying in full, that would be the day um, that you would make that payment. You can pay twice a year, which would be in July and December, or you can take up on uh, 10 monthly payments, which would run from July through April. Uh, and all again, all of that would be through the fax system. And if you're coming from one of our partner parishes, you're probably used to using that, or if you have a student here now. Uh, at this time, I would like to turn it over to Mrs. Jill Seiler uh, for any um, for a presentation on tuition assistance. Hi. Um, so on the left side of your folder, um, you probably already found a bit there was the tuition rates, and then right behind that is an application for tuition assistance. Um, I included it in everybody's packet because um, this past year with COVID and everything, 44% um, of our students actually um, needed some tuition assistance. So I you know, never wanna pick and choose. I just put it in everybody's packet. Um, and if you are interested, 
um, please fill out that tuition assistance application. Um, there's a front and a back to that. And um, please try to get it to me by April 1st. That's the priority deadline. Um, we can't guarantee you know, funds that you know, will be available after that date. Um, but that is for vouchers, SGOs. Um, we also have um, Catholic Education Foundation money. We have mission and ministry grants. Um, some of it is income-based and then others are just need-based. So um, it's the same application for any of those um, forms of aid. Uh, that we do require your 2020 tax return. Um, we only need the pages. We only look at the adjusted gross income and the number of dependents, like the list of dependents that you have on that. So you don't have to send us your whole tax return. Sometimes all that information is on one page. Sometimes it's on two. So it just kind of depends on um, which form you're using, that kind of thing. But um, so I do require that. And then if um, you... Um, receive any child support or any other like social security that may not be um, on the um, or any other money that's not on your tax form. Um, we need documentation of that too. And that's just from, you know, that's a state requirement. It's not ours. Um, the next page right behind the tuition assistance application is the tuition assistance frequently asked questions. So um, you can kind of look down there, there's um, quite a bit of information that just, again, frequently asked questions. Um, if your question is not on there, please, you know, email me. Um, no, there are no such thing as dumb questions about anything for tonight. Um, I always get that, you know, Jill, I think this is a dumb question. I'm like, no, 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 no. there's no dumb questions. So um, please, you know, we, we see this stuff all the time. So sometimes I go over things a little too quickly and, um, and you know, kind of uh, um, go a little quick over things. And, and you know, I don't, I don't realize that I go as fast as I do. So um, let me click to the next slide here. <clears throat> and then the, the uh, form right behind the frequently asked questions is um, the household guidelines for the voucher program and the SGO program. Um, again, this does not include, you know, CEF funds or mission and ministry grant money. These are just guidelines for the vouchers, for the SGOs. Really, it's just for your information. <clears throat> you don't have to, if, if you don't even, you know, there's a lot of information there. It's very confusing. Um, you know, again, if you have any questions about that, please just let me know. And, uh, but that's basically the, these, this chart is what I have to base, um, or that's what the state gives us to base our, um, what we, who, who can qualify for a voucher and an SGO, if that makes sense. So, um, but anyway, if you ha have any tuition assistance application um, questions or anything about the supporting documents, please give me a call or email me and I'll be happy to uh, explain those a little bit better. Okay, so next steps. Um, we have um, coming up next, will be the February Zoom meetings at your school. So um, a few slides back, uh, you may remember when Mrs. Rainier was going through that, there was, you know, Holy Redeemer was a certain date or whatever um, and a certain time. Ms. Rainier will Zoom in to your school and your eighth graders will sit one, one by one, will sit in front of, um, you know, again, we used to do this in person, but, um, this is a whole new world. <laughs> so, um, but she will go over that green sheet with them at that time. And uh, feel free if you want to be a part of that as a parent, um, pass along your uh, phone number to her. She'll be glad to call you during when she's meeting with your child. Uh, but that will be happening in February at those dates. Um, if your child is interested in, in riding the bus, and again, we have no say over that. That's totally... EVSC's call, um, a lot of our kids this year that rode 
last year didn't get to this past year because of COVID restrictions. So we have nothing, um, we don't have any say over that. We just can kind of do our part, fill out the forms. Please make sure they're due back in our office by March 19th. If it's after that, um, I again, that's Mrs. McGrew in the office. She takes care of all that, but she said she, she can't submit them after that. So please make sure that those forms, and that is a yellow form in your folder. Um, but anyway, make sure you fill that out and get it to our office. Um, tuition assistance is next. That priority deadline is April 1st. Um, if for some reason you don't have your taxes done yet, if you've filed an extension, at the very least send your tuition assistance form in. Um, and you know, if nothing else, your W-2s, if it's gonna be a long time, but I will need that tax form at some point. Um, first tuition pay payment is due on July 16th. Um, and our new student orientation is August 4th. Um, that's the day before we start real school. So it's, it's just a really fun day and it is a full day. So just kind of mark that on your calendar and the school calendar is in your folder too. I don't know if we mentioned that before or not, but that is in there. Um, and then also the school physicals and immunization forms are due in our school office by August 9th. So... Now, um, oh yes, and I wanted to make sure that I told you guys to um, follow us on um, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. We have a, a lot of streaming athletics on our YouTube channel right now. And um, if you follow Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, they'll tell you where the links are and, and all that good stuff. Um, also, we send out, you know, what's happening for the week. It's just all kinds of really good information. Um, you know, daily that comes out from here. And then, uh, of course, our um, website, moderndaywildcats.com, has tons of information. Uh, basically, everything we've talked about here um, is on there somewhere and, and even more. So you can just kind of explore on your own um, there. And if you can't find something, please just let us know. So, all right, we are at the end of our presentation. Um, are there any questions, Melba, that we need to? Um, and no, they've all been just single questions, not a general question, so. Okay, awesome. Okay. So I think she's kind of kept up with those mm -hmm. chat questions or those questions in the chat room. Um, if for some reason you did not, um, or if you have a question, you can unmute yourself. But otherwise, if you do have a question, please email one of us. Um, we'll be happy to get back with you, if not tonight, tomorrow, definitely. And um, I will also be sending out this recording um, to everybody, even, you know, even the ones that, that joined tonight. Um, I'm still going to send it out just so that you have it for reference. So, um, but yeah, I'm so glad you guys met with us tonight. This was, again, very odd circumstances and everything, but I really appreciate your time. We all do. And um, we hope to see you live and in person very soon. <laughs> Good night. Don't, 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 don't shut up. Okay. Because you're going to be on. Okay. <laughs> Can I stop the video? Yeah, you're muted, aren't you?